Hey guys, how's it going? It's Ross here on MGF Customs, and I'm finally back for another quick how-to video, my first one in, I think, over a year now. I have no idea how that happened, but anyway, today we're going to be revisiting LEGO's new Scarlet Witch minifigure, once again from the new collectible minifigure series of Marvel Studios characters, and uh, of course, this Scarlet Witch, as I said in the review, is infamous for having what I call a hair crown. So basically, uh, if you're familiar with Sylvie in the scene, MF series, she actually had a double molded hair piece where her crown was a separate piece integrated into the blonde hair piece. And unfortunately, Wanda did not receive the same treatment, and uh, Lego just slapped on a bit of dark red printing instead of actually making a crown integration for her as well. So, for this video, we're going to be exploring three different options for how you can either one, just get a separate hair piece that's a little bit better and not too difficult to come by online, uh, two, actually fix Lego's hair piece from the CMF series, and three, make your own using a really good 3D printed piece by Nate's Minifigs. So yeah, I hope you'll stick around with me for the whole video and be sure to drop a like below if you find it useful in the end. Otherwise, I'll, uh, I'll not make another how-to video for a year. Honestly, that wasn't intentional. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, so option number one is this hairpiece from this bootleg Scarlet Witch from WM Minifigures, and I know this is a capital sin to commit promoting um, knockoff Lego minifigures, but there's no denying this hairpiece is pretty solid and it has a separate Scarlet Witch crown that actually pegs into place with two different slots. So this works really well. You can find these on a variety of sites. I mean, honestly, take your pick or you can even go on eBay and find a US seller and uh, pay a little bit more to get it a little bit faster as well. So if you're willing to cross the unofficial line but are still not quite ready for customizing of any kind, I would say this is your easiest and best option. Now, now, option number two, the one you really want to see, how to fix Lego's actual Scarlet Wish hairpiece that comes with the CMF. So really, for me, this was pretty simple, but it's still precise painting, so you have to use, I cannot emphasize it enough, very tiny amounts of paint, very controlled tiny bits of paint on your push pin, and make sure that you never have too much on there, because with the dark red paint that I'm using here, uh, which is Tuscan red, I believe, it's basically just a matte dark red. It can drip. My bottle is actually a little bit more liquidy than I would like, and so I have to really be careful not to allow this paint to bleed over onto the hairpiece because what we're doing here is essentially first creating an edge with our pin. So again, very tiny amounts of paint on this thing so that we are controlling exactly where we're going and minimizing the risk of the dark red paint bleeding over onto the hair. And essentially, we are just keeping it as close as we can while just again being as controlled and as steady as we can steadying your hands literally steadying my hands on my desk as always and just going around the edge of lego's scarlet witch crown mold and this is slow it takes time and as a matter of fact even i messed up just a little bit toward the end corner but was able to wipe it off very quickly and speaking of wiping it off if you do gravely mess it up or whatever you can of course just run it to the sink get that paint off take a wipe, take a wet paper towel, it's not the end of the world. And even if it dries, it'll still come right off. This paint is very accommodating, which is why I've used it since, you know, like 2011. And so once that edge is completed and we have our baseline, we can now kind of paint just a little bit more freely now that we're not worrying about the actual edges where the crown and the hair connect. So I just paint the rest in dark red. And that's really it. Of course, again, still being careful as to make sure we're not using too much paint at any point. Um, but just painting the rest of it in dark red. And that's it. It's always important to make sure there's no debris in your paint or on your pin because then that'll show up as little specks that get buried under the paint and then you'll have to smooth those over. And you know, I had to apply a little bit more paint in some areas. It's not gonna give you a solid dark red on the first try. You know, sometimes some areas have patches where you have to go over it again. And you know, that's always a part of the process whenever painting anything in a base color. And of course I'm aware the matte dark red is not for everyone, so I mean, I would encourage maybe applying a like Nuln Oil shade from Citadel. You could go with more oil-based paints and that'll get you the uh, glossy red finish that you're going for. I was even tempted to mix a bit of black satin paint in to get a certain final result, but ultimately I was just stuck with what I know. Just 
use the matte dark red and I think it works really well. And so long as you're careful with it, the paint will stay on there. And if you were able to do this, you have corrected Lego's Scarlet Witch crown. Now option number three takes us all the way into the realm of a proper minifig customizer as we will be using a custom 3D printed hair piece from Nate's minifigs as a base. And I'll have a link to Nate's store down in the description below and his work is amazing and incredibly useful for customizers and bypasses what would otherwise be so much sculpting work and has really been changing the game. I mean, look at this hair piece. You can clearly already tell the hairstyle is more accurate than Legos and you know, even if Legos was based off concept art or not, this is definitely a really good option to consider if you want to tackle this. And because these are 3D printed, they do require a little bit of sanding. So basically I'm just identifying the rough areas here um, with one of my jewelry filers and just cleaning it up in a few spots. And then once that's done, brushing away all of those specs and then going over any rough areas that I spot with some gloss paint. So pretty much like a lot of it, just to really make sure that I smooth over as much as I can from the rough uh, 3D printed resin surface. And then once all of that is done and dried, we can start to apply the base color. I'm using a chestnut color from the usual Apple Barrel brand. I've always found this to be reliable for Wanda's hair color. And I mean, you can use a brush for this. I sometimes do when applying base colors, but I mean, I'm just gonna take my push pin and just paint the whole thing with that because um, I can kind of control the paint just a little bit more. And obviously it's a little bit less prone to brush strokes and debris and really using a push pin or a pin of any kind just always allows for more control. And that's why I've always used one. That's kind of the idea. Now this takes a while. I mean, it's a lot of surface area, a lot of ground here to cover. And eventually though, I did get the whole thing painted in the chestnut color and uh, I had to wait for it to dry. Then the process for painting the crown is exactly the same, but you have to be even a little bit more precise with this one because it's a smaller piece. It's a little bit of a different design from Legos. Obviously it's thinner, so you have less room for mistakes. And you also can't just run this underwater, like I said, with Legos, because now you've actually painted the whole hair piece and running it underwater or using wet paper towel of any kind will destroy your work. And so you can't really panic like that. If you do wind up doing this, you have to just correct with more chestnut paint. If you like wind up getting a ton of dark red paint bleeding out onto it or whatever, it's just, you know, a matter of correcting as you go, which has always been a part of the customizing process. It's just with these hair pieces in particular, it's a little bit challenging because you have to actually get behind the crown and there's barely any space obviously between the hair piece and the crown. So this is actually where I employ the use of a brush in a few spaces because you can wet a brush, make it thinner and then slide it into certain areas in really tight spaces like this. And so in this case for that sort of precise painting, I did wind up using a brush for that. Uh, but otherwise, again, it's just creating that edge as carefully, slowly and precisely as you can and then just painting the rest of the crown in dark red. And now eventually for the actual custom, because this is the hairpiece I'll be using for that future figure, I'm just gonna be painting all of that detail you see within Wanda's crown onto this later on, but not right now. And so that's actually it for this option. And this is of course the more hardcore customizer option and not for everybody. Again, if you'd like to attempt this, link to Nate's store will be down in the description below. And there you have it. That is how you fix the Lego Marvel Studios Wanda minifigure from the CMF series. And if you did find it informative or if this helped you at all, let me know down in the comments. And of course, dropping a like below, as I said in the beginning, always helps. But really, I'm more curious what option you are going to try. It's easier to just go for the knockoff uh, WM minifigures hairpiece. But, you know, at the same time, a little bit of precision will get you a long way with the uh, other two options that you just saw. So anyway, I'm going to go because I've been working on this Mandalorian season two showcase since the beginning of time. And it's, it's starting to feel like I'm being held hostage to a certain degree, but I know it's going to be worth it. You know, that's kind of how all my showcases start to feel toward the end. Um, but we're getting there and progress is going up as always over on Patreon first when I am making it. And then also, of course, you can always find me over on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook for all the teaser edits and, uh, you know, just other edits like these No Way Home ones I was doing for the trailer launch and uh, soon some more Mando season two ones as well. If I can just find the time to finish all of those figures. So I'm gonna get back to it and I will see you guys next time. Is there anything else I wanted to mention? I don't think so, bye.